to another that sitteth by. He says, let him first hold his peace. In other words, when people come together and prophetic words are going on and you are seated listening, he says, let the person seated discern and he says, then he can receive a revelation from what was spoken before so that all things are done decently and in order. He says, the last verse says, God is a God of peace and not of confusion. So it's important to build up on what other speakers also have said. That's why I believe that Paul said this. He said, I, Paul, planted. He said, Apollos watered and God gave the increase. In other words, Apollos focused on what Paul had already planted. And he watered that for there to be an increase. So for there to be an increase, then there has to be that collaboration there in Revelation. So I'll start from Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1. We start on by saying, Galatians 4. It says, now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, that's the heir, as long as he is a child or immature, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord over all. And Apostle Paul was speaking about this yesterday, about sonship, a mindset, and a servitude, a mindset. And it says that a child or an heir, as long as he is a child, verse 1, it says it differs not, as long as he's immature, does not differ from a person who has the mindset of a servant, even though he is Lord or he is actually owner over all. So the entire inheritance belongs to him. But he approaches things that he does or she does with a mindset of the servant or servitude. Now when we look at Luke chapter 15 and verse 25. Luke 15, 25 to 32. Look at the elder brother and the dynamics with the younger brother. Now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked him these things, what these things meant. And he said unto him, thy brother is come and thy father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry. Now, this is that mindset of the servant. He was angry and jealous about what had happened and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years. Now see the mindset of his son who had that, of a, the mindset of his son who was actually a servant's mindset, but he was technically a son. He said, these years, many years, do I serve thee? Neither have I transgressed any of the commandments which thou hast given, but thou hast never given me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him a fatted calf. Hear what the father said. In other words, you are walking here with the mindset of a servant. And he said unto him, Son, Thou art ever with me, all that I have is thine. So what he was serving with there, and I want to speak about this this morning about as we get into praying in the Holy Ghost and the inheritance. The mindset that, in fact, the person we call the prodigal son had more of a sonship mindset than the elder brother. Because he said, give unto me my inheritance. The elder brother had that servitude mindset. And he was serving and doing stuff and waiting for his father to reward him for the things that he was doing. And the father said, I didn't think you needed it because all that I have is actually yours and you could have gone in and you could have done it. Which means even in my stead, you could have thrown this party for your younger brother when he came. This mindset here 
is where we see where jealousy comes from, where anger and envy comes from, right? And it's important that we have that. So this brings me back to what we're saying, connecting it here. That we must understand that our prayers doesn't isn't when you pray to God that God hears about what you are going through. And then he begins to think as to what to do to resolve that particular issue. You must approach him with a mindset there of God has already blessed us without us even asking him. In other words, like I said, the problem is not on the part of God given. The problem is on the part of his children receiving. The elder brother had a problem there with receiving. The father did not have a problem with giving. The dissatisfaction the elder brother had in the field of his father, that all these years I have served you, was not the father a problem with the father, it was a problem with the son there receiving, all right, that which the father had made available. Because he said, all that I have is already yours. And we said the Holy Spirit therefore was sent to solve, help us solve the receiving problem. That God has already blessed. That you don't have an issue with God giving the problem is with us receiving. That even before we got saved thousands of years ago, when we were yet in a sin, we were not living right. We were not, I mean, humanity was out of the way. Without us having to pray to God because we didn't even know his plan. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Bible says God commended his love towards us. In that while we were yet sinners, Romans 5, 8, he sent, the Bible says, were Christ, and Christ died for us. Now, we didn't pray about that. We didn't ask him. We didn't even know about it. God sent Jesus, and he died. And then in Romans 8 and verse 32, it tells us that if he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also have freely given us all things? Now, the issue is when you are in a situation that God has given us something for that particular situation that will exceed in abundant measure anything you could have asked or thought in that particular situation. So he says, I have given certain things. And he's very specific about this. When he called Abraham out, he said, get out of your father's house to the land that I will show you. It wasn't any land that Abraham felt he should take that he went and took. It was the one that God says, I will show you. In other words, there is something God wants to do in that particular situation. Now, what's creating the first problem with receiving? We are saying that we have decided or we choose on things. You know, we think things and start praying. And the first approach should be, God gave his son and with him has freely given me everything. So there must be something that God has given me in this particular situation that I need to receive. So I go up to him to thank him first. That's my posture of the song there. To thank him for the things that he must have blessed me with that I have absolutely no idea about. And so it is the function of the Holy Spirit to take the things of Jesus and show them unto you. It's the function of the Holy Spirit, all right, to reveal to you the things that are to come. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7, we see this here. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 7, we see this here. But we speak wisdom of God in a mystery. 
even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world to our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I hath not seen, air hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He says, I have not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared already for that particular situation. But then he goes and says, but, hath, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. All right, for he searcheth all things here, the deep thing. So he has revealed these things unto us by his spirit. And so in Romans chapter 8 and verse 24, this is what he's saying here. He's saying in Romans chapter 8, 24, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. Now you must know that the things he has prepared for us, I have not seen, ear has not heard. So he says we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, what means we are hoping for what he has prepared, then with patience we wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. And what's that infirmity? For we know not what to pray or what to receive there as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. So a person in a situation there will understand that as a son, I'm going to start with this, I acknowledge that God has prepared for me things that no man's eye has seen, things that no man's ear has heard. He has prepared wisdom for me, hidden wisdom. He says he has prepared that from the foundation of this world. Now he has given me his spirit on the inside to be able to receive uh, this particular wisdom into my heart. And with that wisdom, then I will know exactly what I'm supposed to do. So the Holy Spirit begins to make intercession. Uh, the Bible says he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. How be it in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So as you start praying in the spirit, acknowledging that God has already given and done what he wants to do, it is already there. That is, you are a son and everything has already been given. Now you want to access the wisdom of God for that particular situation. So you start praying in the Holy Spirit there. And the scripture tells us in Romans 8, 26, knowing that I don't know what to pray for as I ought. But the Holy Spirit begins to make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And the Bible says, and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. For he is making intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit is praying out the exact will of God. And what he wants to do, and I want to show the person how we get it done. He wants to reveal to us what exactly he is praying at that particular point in time. He wants that light bulb to go on on the inside of us. Which means to illuminate your understanding. To make you know exactly what he is praying about. And once you know exactly what he is praying about, then you are able to receive that particular thing into your life. So as you are praying in the Spirit, it's the mind of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit knows what he's saying. The Father knows what the Holy Spirit is saying because he's praying according to the will of God. The Bible tells us that the Spirit shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he hears, that shall he speak. So he's saying that the very will of the father, the only person who is ignorant in that particular situation is us. I, you understand what I'm saying here? The only ignorant person who is ignorant is us. 
Now, let's step back. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 2. Let me show you here. The Bible speaks about the high priest. Who can have compassion? Now, what's he having compassion on? He's having compassion on the ignorant. And on them that are out of the way. For he himself is compassed with infirmity. So, the Holy Spirit, the, Jesus there, he says the problem with my people is ignorance. That's why he's have your high priest there. He says to, you are out of the way there because you are ignorant. Let me give an example. You could be praying to God. You are in a marriage feast as just as the wine has finished. You are confessing that God will provide all of my need according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you are praying for that need to be met. Now, because a person is ignorant, there are empty pots along the place where he's praying. He says, pack those pots aside so I can have a way to pray. He doesn't know that those pots... Do you understand what I'm saying here? That the, the solution is fill the pots with what? Water. Now, that's what he, that is that light he wants to give. When they came there and they wanted to feed the multitudes, people started suggesting, we don't have enough money, 200 penny worth and all of that. Jesus, the Bible says, he knew what to do. The solution was already there. He said, go in, go and bring the five loaves. They brought the five loaves. The person who brought it said, what is this among so many? Without that light, you'll be throwing away the solution to your problem. Now, many people that are saying that, I don't know where God is. We are trying to tell you, this is what I want to show here. God is right there. The thing is right before you. Uh, they began to give suggestions. Some said, look, let us tell them to depart. Another said, let us tell them to do this. Uh, that's what I said. The problem is receiving. People know that, well, God wants to provide. But wh what's the solution? People know that God wants to heal. But even when God said, I've added 15 years to you, the prophet said, go and boil figs, put it on it, and it will disappear. That's what you need to do. I can know I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, but what's the connecting thing to cause it to materialize? I can know that, listen, my business should expand and I should break forth on the left and the right. But what exactly am I supposed to do? Now, once you start praying in the spirit, the only person there that is ignorant is you and your spirit begins to search. Your spirit begins to seek to find out. What exactly is the Holy Spirit saying? Because if you get that light, you are made. I want to show you today, this is where the church should be. A preacher back then in America, his name was Larry Lim, many years ago. He had a church. No, he went, he said how he discovered prayer. He said he went to hold a meeting somewhere. And he preached, 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 and he made a call. Well, he did think nothing happened in the meeting. He went back. The next day again, he came, he preached. Nothing happened. He said on the third day, he was about to close the meeting and he was frustrated. He said he saw two women who came to meet him. And they asked and said, we saw you playing the guitar yesterday. He said, yes. So they gave him the guitar. Can you help us tune, fine tune our guitar? He said, I'll do it. When he did it for them, they said, all right. What we came to tell you is this. We've been in prayer for five hours. And what you are supposed to preach is on the five loaves and two fish. Do you know that part of the Bible? He said, yes. He had not prepared that message. They said, go and preach it. We have prayed. And that is the message God wants. He got on the stage. He preached. 500 people responded in an altar call. He said, the next day, let's welcome Reverend Killer. All right. He said the next day, what happened? He went looking for those women there. They told him again, we've prayed another five hours. This is the message. He preached again, the same thing happened. He said he discovered prayer. Listen, Jesus, the man told all night and caught what? Nothing. Jesus said, launch out into the world deep. 
if you go there, cast your net for a drought. A drought is an, a, is an animal back then. They used to gather in a lot of goods and all of that. What he was saying was, uh, throw your net down. Peter said, we did this last night and caught nothing. Jesus said, launch into the deep. You see that deep there? The Bible says God has prepared things. He says the spirit will reveal the deep things. Once the deep things of God start getting revealed to you, you repeat exactly what you have done with that knowledge, you see results. Now, so this is what I came to show here. Look at Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. The Bible says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Proverbs, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Now, what's in the inward parts of your belly? Because of time. Um, in, in the book of John, Jesus said in John 7, 37, he says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke about the Holy Spirit. So your spirit is searching because the Holy Spirit knoweth all things. No man knows the things of a man except the spirit of that man. Your spirit is limited to the knowledge of your things. But the spirit knows all things. He did the things of God. So your spirit wants to pick from the Holy Ghost. And as the Holy Spirit is praying out, he's saying those things so that they can be. That's why Paul said, he that prayed in another tongue, let him also ask for an interpretation. In other words, to get what was being said. So your spirit is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Now what happens when, that, when it happens right? Look at um, Proverbs, sorry, Job 29 and verse 1. Job 29 and verse 1. You hear what Job said. That's all going here. Job said this, all right? Moreover, Job continued his parable. Folks, listen. This is where I'm going. We are spirit, soul, and body. You agree? The body can be developed. Saint or sinner can develop the body. The mind can be developed. People can read and get educated and develop their mind. The advantage the Christian has is the practical use of the spirit. Our advantage is the practical, which means the ability to go into the spirit realm and get things. Now, Job continued his parable. Remember, the spirit of a man is the what? Candle of the Lord. Look at what he says. Oh, I was, when I was in trouble, as in the months past, in the days when God preserved me. How did he do it? When his candle shined upon my what? Head. When by his light I walked through what? Darkness. He didn't say God removed the darkness. He said by his light I walked through the darkness. How did he get the light? He says the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. He said when his candle, that's my spirit, communicated things to my head. That when there was a situation, I'm going somewhere with this. When you are in the office, I will show this here. And there is a challenge. You as a Christian, you say, bring it to my table. Yes, now, when you said, bring it to my table, you didn't know the solution. Yes. When Daniel said, bring it, Daniel did not know the solution. He said, but we will take it to God. He said, I will be back with the answer. King, don't kill anybody again. The magician said there is no body in flesh that can access that information. It is beyond the regions of the human mind. You have to have your dwellings with God. He said that is where we are. There is a, said, there is a difference between a son walking and a servant walking. A servant is looking for promotion. To a son, when you give them a job, it's not the salary. You've given me field to practice. Once I practice this thing, I perfect it. I am indispensable. Let's go on here. Look at Psalm 23, verse 4. All right? Now, we all know this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not do what? Want. Well, see how it plays out. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. We like that. He leadeth me beside the still waters. We like that. 
He restoreth my soul. We like that. Do I walk in paths of righteousness for his name's sake? All right? Okay? Then, verse 3. It says, let's go to verse 3. It says, verse 3. He restoreth my soul. We like that. He leads me in paths of righteousness for it. So, he's the one leading you in paths of righteousness. Do you agree? Now, where does that path take you to? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So, as he's leading you, he will lead you to the valley of the shadow of death of death. You get what I'm saying here? Because it is only in the valley of the shadow of death your distinction will come out. I want to show you something this morning. It's when you get to the valley. If we are all, let's listen to this. When there was abundance for seven years, there was no divine distinction. The distinction came in the seven years of famine. Isaac was normal until famine came. That's when you access the light in the realm of the spirit. And I want to show you in practical terms. He said, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. So he knew, I fight fear first. Then he says this, quickly. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy... Thou has anointed my head with oil, my cup run over. In other words, he has prepared a table. Because of time, it's a table of wisdom he has prepared. He says, what has he done? He has poured his spirit on his head, anointed his head, 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 head. He started giving ideas from the ideas his cup started running over. That if the spirit touches your head, you will produce an abundance. What people are praying is, God, take me out of the valley of the shadow of death. Do you get what we're saying here? You see the servant son dimension. Take me out of the valley of the shadow of death. This is the way I'm supposed to be. Paul was praying, Lord, let this thing depart. God said, it can't depart like that. You will miss divine opportunity. My grace is sufficient. Everything is available. Tap into it. So it's light. This inheritance we're talking about is light. This inheritance, not cars, is not houses, is light. At the beginning, God said, let there be what? Light. I heard them well. I said it when I started. You sit down, you listen to people, you discern, revelation comes. Apostle Peter said he's been discussing with Reverend as to the conversation in Africa. We have to take this gospel from a materialistic place into wisdom. If the church in Africa uses this revival to download wisdom, the inheritance is light. The Bible says, have you seen that? Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Comes from the Father of light. If you read the translation, it says, comes from the Father who gives it to you in the form of light. Every good and perfect gift comes as light. Now, it's what you do with that light. When there was no food, Jesus had what? Light. He said, bring the bread to me. That's why it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 13. Let me show you. Colossians 1. We are getting to it now. We are, we are getting close to the message. It says, giving thanks to the Father who has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in what? Light. That inheritance is light. Look at the next verse. Who has delivered us from the power of what? Darkness. The power of Satan is Darkness. The deliverance of God is light. Look at what David prayed about. In Psalm 13 and verse 1. Look at what David prayed. Psalm 13 verse 1. David. How long shall thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? 
How long shall I take counsel in my soul? Not that word counsel, in his own soul. He was thinking, where's the solution? And he couldn't get out of it. He says, having sorrow in my heart daily, how long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Which means the enemy is winning. How do I get out of this? Look at his prayer. Consider and hear me, O Lord, lighten my eyes. Lest I do what? Sleep the sleep of death. If my eyes are opened, I'm out. Are you following saying here? To us, famine will be punishment if we go do it this way. Because we are looking for things on the outside instead of looking for light. Let me show this here. Go to Genesis chapter 21, verse 14 to verse 20. Now, he says, lighten my eyes lest I sleep the sleep of what? Death. Now, this is the story of Abraham and Ishmael. I want to say something here. Abraham was very rich. You remember this? You know this? Very rich in, in silver and in gold. Very rich. Ishmael of his house. Now, as far as Ishmael was concerned, as far as Ishmael was concerned, oh, he doesn't know Revelation. His own is, and my father's first son. The father is sending him out of the house. Look at what Abraham gave him when he was living. A, a man who is very rich in silver and gold. Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water. One loaf of bread. One bottle of water. And gave it to Hagar, put it on her shoulder and the child. And sent her away. And he was saying, you will never set your eyes on me again. Out. Your father releases you with a loaf of bread and a what? Bottle of water. And you are seeing sheep, goats, cows, gold, diamonds. And he says, go. That loaf of bread can only last for three days. And you are going into the wilderness, the scorching sun. Look at what happened. Did Abraham hate him? No. Look at what happened. Now, it grieved Abraham to let him go. So Abraham loved him. Look at what happened next. Let's go on. And the water was spent in the bottle. All right? The water was spent in the bottle, and she cast her child under one of the shrubs. Verse 16. And she went and sat down over and against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death. Now, remember, David said, lighten my eyes as I sleep the sleep of death. The death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and she cried. So, the woman said, put him very far. I don't want to see him deteriorate. He's my son until he dies. It was very far as she sat and she began to cry. My son is about to die. This is death. Look at what happened. I want to tell you, it wasn't that woman's prayer, you'll see this, that God heard. Ishmael prayed. Now, I believe what happened was that Abraham called Ishmael into a conference before he left. He said, son, let me tell you how the covenant works. Let me give you some light into it. You may not be a child that can sit on the table or hear the crumbs. When you go out and this bottle of water finishes and this bread finishes, Go to God, my God in heaven, and ask him for one thing. What you should ask for is not for more bread, not for more water, but eyes that see. The solution is always there. The question is, you cannot see it. Abraham said, this is how the covenant works, my son. I have given you the secret to the covenant. It is never, God give me a car house, is God give me eyes that see. Look at what happened. It was, listen to this. It wasn't that woman's prayer. For look at what happened here. Look at the verse here. And God heard the voice of who? The lad. Not the woman. And the angel of the Lord called to Haggai and said out of heaven, What aileth thee? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad. Where he was, is. 
Then what did she say? Lift him up and hold him in your hand. I will make him a great nation. How was he going to do it? And God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. The solution was there. She just didn't see it. That's why Paul prayed. If you want to enter the inheritance, may God give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of your understanding may be what? Enlightened. So in Psalm 106 verse 13, it says, Psalm 106, no, no, 106, verse 13, it says, 106, they soon forgot his works and they waited not for his what? Cancel. The Bible says they lost not exceeding in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. He gave them their request but sent what? Leanness to their souls. And they envied Moses. So, like Apostle Luca said, we have the son and the servant here. The servant always envies. What the son asks for is cancel. What the servant asks for are things. Do you see what I'm saying? They waited not. The Bible says to Moses, God made known the ways of God. So the children of Israel, he made known the acts of God. What they prayed for wasn't what these other folks were praying for. That's why when God came to Solomon, what did Solomon ask for? Solomon asked for wisdom. God said, you could have asked for the life of your enemies. You could have asked for riches. You could have asked. You mean you touched the call? He said, you mean I gave you a blank check? And you didn't ask for wealth. You didn't ask for power. You didn't ask for position. What you asked for was the call. Wisdom. He said, with this, every other thing will bow to you. So we see. Now, what did Moses do in his own case? When Moses was in any situation that same type, Moses always knew God has already made the provision. It's, it's not, you see, this how you enter into it. It's not God. Look, this is what you should do in this place. God, there's no food. In the rock, there was water in the rock. You only had to know to speak to it. Are you seeing what I'm saying? God already has provided. That's the consciousness. Which means I'm in a situation God has provided. Don't trouble yourself. What we need is to go and download what he has given. Look at what happened in Exodus chapter 14 verse 12. Look at what happened here. Alright. Look at what happened. Exodus 14 12 here. Now look at Moses. And this is where Moses understood it. Alright. Now this folks said. Is not this the word we told you. I told you those folks never prayed. Never prayed what God was providing. They were praying for a better life in bondage. He said is not this the word. This was their first challenge. Is not this the word we did tell them in Egypt saying. Let us alone. So they never wanted to leave Egypt. That we may serve the Egyptians. They wanted to serve the Egyptians. They just said the Egyptians should treat them better. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in this wilderness. Now, Moses opened his mouth and said to them, and you need to say this, we said words count. Fear not and stand still. Moses didn't know what was going to happen. He had no idea. Fear not and stand still, but he made a bold confession. Are you following saying you are in business, they say, well, something has just happened, the government answered, the policy or something has happened, that your business should crash. You stand before your staff, fear not, and stand still. Nobody will lose their job in this company. Do you get what I'm saying here? Now, you have no idea. But you have a spirit who knows all things. He says, stand still. You shall see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. So he shows it. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them no more forever. Now, let me show you that he didn't know what he was doing. Uh, the Lord shall fight for you. He was saying all of that, and you shall hold your peace. Now, get what happened. The Lord said to Moses, wherefore are you crying unto me? In other words, Moses was still crying to God. God said, why are you crying? So, he said it to the people, but when he turned to God, he said, God. He said, why are you crying? This is the counsel. Tell the people to go forward. Lift the rod. What you need is light. That counsel. Tell the people to march towards it. Then what you should do is to lift the rod. When they got to the place of bitter waters, Moses understood it. He said, Lord, what do we do? Not, I will tell you what I want. What do we do? God said, there's a branch there. Cut it. 
throw it into the waters. When they got to a place there was no water, Lord, what do we do? A person who operates as a son knows God has already provided. The question is, what do I do? What did Mary say? Whatsoever he tells you, do it. Don't ask for what you think should be done. Access his wisdom in this situation. So as we bring this to a close, I want to take this in practical terms into the marketplace. So we, it's not just that we're just saying it into the marketplace. And how it works in the marketplace. As a son in the marketplace, walking in a place for, even sometimes for heathen people who are not Christians, how does it function? Or you're an owner of a business. How does it function? Now, in Psalm 123 and verse 2, this is what David said. He said, 1232, Behold the eyes of servants. Look to the hand of their masters. A person with that mindset of servitude is looking to the hand of his master. Which means my increase will come when this person pays me more. That's why he's working. He doesn't understand work yet. He feels I'm working, looking to the hand of master. The eyes of, he says this, of the maiden to the hand of their mistress. Well, he says, our eyes, because this is a scripture for commas. We are talking about servants, masters, maidens, mistress. He says, but our eyes are on thee, O Lord, until you have what? Mercy upon us. So I go to work. And at the end of it in my career, you are going to see that it's not of him that runneth, nor of him that willeth, but it's of God that does what? Showeth mercy. How does that happen? So I'm no longer looking to the boss or to somebody as you are going to reward me. Listen to what I'm saying here. Neither even when I'm serving in church, I'm looking towards the church to reward me. I want to show you something. Don't make that mistake. Ah, they don't reward me. Why do you believe they didn't reward me? Ah, they don't, but it starts complaining. They don't want your mom and complaining. It says, listen, there's a reward. Listen to what it says. The Bible says, God is not unjust. It is injustice for God not. Do you get what I'm saying here? Look at what it says here in Colossians chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 22 to 25. Now look at it. It brings the master and servant dynamics again. It says, Colossians 3, 22, starts from 22 to 25. It says, servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. Not with eye service, which means you are not looking, you know, you do things in front of them, you know, and there's hypocrisy. Oh, the boss is coming, and everybody run and die. Then everybody are laughing and playing. And he says, well, wait, and then the boss has come, and then you do, and then the boss is not around. And, and, and then you say, I've done it, all right? It says, Masters are going to flesh, not with eye service, as men please us, but with singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do heartily, with the whole of your heart, as unto the Lord and not unto men. Which means if you are walking, you know that you are walking for Jesus. Are you following what I'm saying here? Every Christian in the marketplace must be efficient. Every Christian in the marketplace has character. Every Christian in the marketplace doesn't, be, doesn't go into eye service and all of that. They are, are because they know they are directly employed by Jesus. Look at the next verse. It says, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive. Next verse. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it goes on and says... But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong that he has done. There's no respect of persons. Then he goes to the next verse. That's chapter 4, 1. There are no chapter and verses. Masters, give to your servants. Says masters also. That which is just and equal. Knowing that you have a master in heaven. In other words, bosses there. says do what is right and equal. Do just and equal. Uh, servants do this. He said because there's a reward system of God in this. Now what's that reward? He says the reward of the inheritance. In other words, when you're working, when you're doing stuff there, what God 
them will reward you with his inheritance. I'm going, I want to show you what that inheritance is what? Light. Now, in the midst of that work, God wants to illuminate and open your eyes to see things that nobody has seen. Are you following what I'm saying here? When you are working as an accountant, you will see products nobody else has seen. You will see ways to render service no human being has ever seen. He will anoint your head with oil. It will cause your cup to run over. You will come out with ideas that nobody... He says that's the reward. So you are looking to God while you are walking, saying, God, I am here. I will be diligent in everything. And my reward is coming from you. What is this reward? Look at Luke chapter 16, verse 10 and to verse 12. What is this reward? He that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in much. And he that is unjust in that which is least is also unjust in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who shall commit to your trust the true riches? So there's money and there's what? True riches. Look at the next thing. If, if you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who shall give you that which is yours? In other words, whether you are walking under or you are leading, he says you should be faithful in the thing of another man. Do you, you get what I'm saying here? So the master should behave in a certain way. The servant also should behave in a certain way. He says if you want to access the true riches. Now, what are the true riches that he wants you to access? The true riches is what is called the riches of your glorious what? Inheritance. That is what he wants you to come in contact with as you walk, which means that I am not doing this that I'm doing for money. I am going to be rewarded there with the true riches of God. So we see what are these true riches. In Romans chapter 11 and verse 33, it says the true riches, Romans eleven thirty three. It says this, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways are past finding out. Paul came to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. It is the riches of wisdom and knowledge. In other words, while you are right there, and this is how the patriarchs operated, while Joseph was there, Joseph was a faithful man. Joseph walked with integrity. Even behind the back of the master, Joseph said, I cannot do this to my master. That's what faithfulness is. That my master will never know about this. But if I do it, I'm tampering with the reward of God. Moses left having, having respect to the recompense. He had respect to the reward. Which means they understood that if I do this thing, if I'm stealing money, if I think that I'm gaming the system, I might be getting material things. But listen, I'm missing out on the true riches. What's the true riches? is riches of wisdom and knowledge. In other words, I am going to have the opportunity here to have Access to wisdom there and access to the knowledge of God. Things that no man's eyes. I'm going to enter into it. And it is those things that I enter into. It is those things I enter into. You know, there was a gentleman once. Let me tell you this. I met him in a hotel in, a, in, in, a, in, a, in the lounge of, of a, we're going to London. He walked up to me and he was laughing. And I said, it was fine. I said, why is fine? I said, Pastor, yeah, I, I come to church. I said, you come to church. I said, ah, wait, which center? So he explained to me. He said, I'm in this. I handle this live stream. And I said, all right, fine. I said, so where are you going to? He said, I'm going to England. I said, all right, so you live in London. So he said something. So I said, do you live in London? He said, no, I live in London. I live in Lagos. I live in San Francisco. I said, how did you arrive at this? He said, well, they were doing so, so, and so. And well, the, to cut long story short, he said, Amazon was doing face recognition. And they were doing it, and they got stuck because with people that were colored, people of African descent, they were failing in the system that created for face recognition. So they were looking for somebody who could help them with it. He said, they contacted us, and they flew me down to the place, and we devised something. 
I said, right. He laughed. He said, Pastor, do you know what? I said, what? He said, all that knowledge I used, I got it in church, doing live stream and doing. I'm telling you, the car, I'm telling you, there is true riches. Are you following what I'm saying here? This is what they call true riches. In other words, when you're walking, you start seeing things nobody else sees. Even the person who created it didn't see it that way. We invited once a director in Google. He told me, he walked, well, I can't say where he was, but he walked inside the government of America, everything. He said to me, he said, you don't understand. He said, inside the State Department, we made the products. He said, young Africans are doing things with our devices we never imagined would be done. So there's, there's riches of what? Wisdom. That's where it is. Because if you get the products and services, well follows. But you need a practice ground. You don't look to the hand of the master and start playing well. Give me an increase in salary. Look, let, let me show you what I'm saying. This is in the marketplace. Look at what they said. Daniel chapter 5, verse 10. 10 to 12. Look at what they said of Daniel. Now, the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house. And the queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee. Let not your countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and what? Understand. Do you get what I'm saying here? Look at it. And wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Whom King Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, thy king, I say, thy father made the master of magicians. Astrologers, Chaldeans, and he says, you are ignoring the person who made your father's kingdom great. And how did he do it? With light, with wisdom, and with understanding. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of heart center, and dissolving doubts, were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named uh, Bethesda, all right, now let Daniel be called, and he will show you the word interpretation. Call him. This marketplace. That is, what you are contributing, they can't access. This is a son in the marketplace. A servant is going there, increase my salary. A son is going there to demonstrate wisdom. Are you following what I'm saying? Look at what happened to Jacob. They changed Jacob's salary ten times. Jacob did not move. It wasn't about money. When Jacob wanted to go, Jacob told him, it's time to leave. The man said, I have learned by experience. Since you're coming in, when you entered this business, we were few. I am saying it is by you we have been multiplied. In other words, you have wisdom you are using. That is causing growth. He said, okay, let's go into partnership. If you say, my, I mean, that will give you shares in the company. I hope you understand what I'm saying. You move from a point where you are so valuable, you are such an asset that they say, okay, we cannot let you go. This is not that I'm playing games because you know how to access that light. The man wanted to trick Daniel again. Um, Jacob again. Jacob said, I will show you wisdom you've never seen. He, he said what? He said, listen. All right, let's do it this way. Jacob was taught by God. He said, bring all the black sheep. Put all the brown sheep. Put all the spotted. If the spotted can produce black, if the brown will produce spotted, brown to brown, and if the black to black will produce white, any white one that they produce is mine. And the man looked at him. It has never happened in the history of the world. That you put black sheep together and they produce black. It's like Africans come together and give birth to a Caucasian. It's not possible. Do you get what I'm saying here? That's what he said he would do. He said, is this the deal? He said, deal. Daniel had wisdom. This is not that God gave you something you don't know how it came. Do you get what I'm saying here? He had wisdom. And the way to access this wisdom 
is take up challenges when they are, practice the art of not dodging from challenges and asking for an increase. Take up the challenge for, even if it's not in your field, say, bring it to my table. By the time you show yourself publicly to kill Goliath, you must have killed the bear and lion. Say, I will solve this problem. If you are the person there that runs a business, set goals for yourself. Go to God and say, God, listen, give me the goal that I don't have an idea I will get there. Then I will start asking, show me what to do. Show me the wisdom. He will give you patterns. That's what he's saying. What no man's eye has seen. Nobody in this world has ever seen it. He says, those riches are unsearchable. They are there. What did they say of Jesus? This mighty works that you are doing. Where did you get the wisdom? That's what they say. This mighty works you are doing. Where has it come from? Wisdom. So there are two types of people. Like Apostle said last night, they'll be servants and they'll be sons. Servants in the workplace are looking for things. Sons are building themselves. Are you following what I'm saying? They leave that place and they go in, start things that people say, kings will be startled. If God reads in Isaiah, he says, who told you? He, the king said, where did you get what we never heard of? How come you saw what we didn't see? Kings in the industry will say, where in the world did you get this from? It was as Jacob walked with the sheep that he came to understand certain principles. Are, you understand what I'm saying? That he came to understand. And so your prayer should be that. So where God wants to take the church into, and this is what we have to solve in Africa. When Christianity went to Europe, they turned that thing into wisdom. They brought systems out of the scripture. They brought an order of governance out of the scripture. They took the scripture that said, God is a king. God is a lawgiver and God is a judge. And they said if God administers as a king, a lawgiver, and a judge, then the system of government has to be three arms. Judiciary, legislative, executive. You must have a president, you must have a congress or a parliament, and then you must have the judiciary. They entered scripture. Do you get what I'm saying here? When you have a challenge, God is saying, listen, my grace is what? Sufficient. If you own a business, be faithful in the unrighteous man unto them. And let the people know, listen, we are going to greater height. If we make a hundred, twenty of this hundred will belong to you. Whoever comes with the idea that breaks through in this, this is what I will do. If you are faithful, God will continue to pour those unsearchable riches. You understand what I'm saying? With your permission, um, Reverend, I want to play a prophecy. 1984. Um, I hope it's cute. All right? In 1984, a friend sent this to me. In 1984, Kenneth Copeland gave a prophecy. This is 1984. Listen to this prophecy. This is not 40 years ago. This wasn't yesterday. 1984. How he believed that there were products, that there were things there that God wanted to bless his people with, that was going to create the wealth through which the kingdom would be financed. But his people were not in alignment with God concerning those things. Therefore, because God knew those things were labor.